Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. I like to sing the song. Hey, everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble. It is a Tuesday night. And in about 25 minutes right now, we're going to go check in with the Citizens Panel. But right now, we're going to go and check in with an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Bubs. <laughs> I guess that's just all we have to call you, right? That's that's the um, that's that's the moniker that's hung on for what thirty five years. So yeah, I'm stuck with it. <laughs> I'm stuck with it. Anyway, um, uh, so wait a minute, you're going to a dermatologist today? Yeah, I got this weird growth. Uh, I worry about melanoma since I've had one. So uh, well, you had a melanoma. Yeah, yeah. Which is if you get them early enough, it's no problem. So yeah. But they got to dig them out, though. That's the problem. They got to dig them out. And this is on the ear. If they like, if they're on the face or the head, wherever the skin is the thinnest, that's where they're the most dangerous. Because they uh, melanomas, they 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 burrow down. Yeah. And then when that the mole has cancerous cells in it, and then if, when it gets to the bloodstream, when they break off, and that's pretty much you're dead at that point. So. It's it's a cancerous mole, which is a disgusting yeah. term to begin with. Yes. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so um, uh, every time we uh, we talk to people these days, it's about health, and I guess it's because of my age. <laughs> when you get old, that's all you talk about. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happens. So uh, you know, you uh, you wonder, well, geez, you know, I I don't know what I got to do here. You know, uh, do I do I go to a doctor? Don't I go to a doctor? Uh, Am I feeling good? Am I not feeling good? I finally decided that I I've always been a hypochondriac, and the problem yeah, me is, too yeah. Problem is I got people who call this show right at night, and one night I looked at all of them or about six of them, and every one of them had something worse than anything I could possibly have. <laughs> I mean, one guy had prostate cancer. Another guy is in a wheelchair. He's paralytic from the uh, waist down. Uh, let's see here. Another one is losing his heel and may have to have his foot removed. Another, you know, and I'm thinking, oh yeah. And then my, st I've got IBS <laughs> you know? I mean, and I go, you know, I should count my blessings really, you know? So, uh, uh, I've never had a melanoma. How do you, but you don't go out in the sun that much. You're the most pale. No, I'm running all the time. So yeah, oh, I do. Oh so. yes. Okay. Cause you, you're, I always thought of you as pale, you know? Yeah. I'm somewhat, uh, pale, but the, uh, although I've read that you can't, melanomas can be caused by genetics other than sun. So it's not always the sun that does it. No, no. That's okay. So how uh, everything else is fine? Uh, yeah, yeah, good allergies, but everyone I guess everyone out here has the worst allergies this year ever. So Well, yeah, I I started not, out terribly. I started out terribly a couple of days ago and it was just it was ghastly. Yeah, they uh they wha I didn't know they really whack you out. Aside oh. from the sneezing and Well, people sure. think they have a cold but they don't. Right. You know, it's allergies. Uh, and I, I, I don't know how you can tell the difference, really, because quite frankly, you can get allergies that make you just as miserable as a cold would. Uh, or worse. But one thing I read, that if you, if you sneeze more than three times in a row, it's almost an, always an allergy. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. And if... Uh, uh, well, you if know what? It's not, what, what if I, it's not as clear, yeah. it's an allergy, too. What I always hated were people who, um, who couldn't tell the difference between a flu and the cold. You know, uh, people don't understand. If you have a cold, you don't run a temperature. Right. If you run a high temperature, you've got the flu. But people go, oh, it's flu season. I've got the flu. How do you know you've got the flu? I've been sneezing all day. And <laughs> I mean, do you have a temperature? No. Then you don't have the flu. Yeah. With a flu, you're really knocking your ass, too, exactly. generally. So. Exactly. So anyway, that was, uh, it's, uh, yeah, good. Well, anyway, uh, what else is new? Well, I found my old 
uh, almanac book, uh, and I, I'm looking at, I found this section called Entertainment Personalities of the Past, and I, I said, I bet I could pick out any name here, and Alex will know okay, something Okay, now about wait a minute. This is, this is what an almanac it's called? It's the World Almanac from 2000. But, uh, <laughs> do, they, do, they don't, do they even make those anymore? You know, like, I don't know if they do or not. Everything's online now. I'll but. tell you, one, one group of people that are out of work, encyclopedia salesmen. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, whatever happened to the Encyclopedia Britannica, I guess they're online. They must be. That used to be. That used to be an incredible gift to get those. Oh yeah. Well, people would, and uh, there were salesmen who would come door to door, give your children the gift of knowledge. Give, you know, the only thing was, you bought an encyclopedia this year, and next year it was out of date. So ev- right. every year they gave you an update to the encyclopedia you already had, which of course they would charge you for. But it I took never, up a lot of room. I never had an encyclopedia, and that's why I'm so stupid. <laughs> All right, so you're putting the challenge to me about people. Uh, do I know who they are? Do I not know who they are? Oh, yeah, let's start off with, uh, uh, he's probably related, Robert Alda. Robert Alda was uh, Alan Alda's father, and um, he was See? famous for the song Donkey Serenade. Okay, I never heard of that. <laughs> it was from a movie he was in, and I can't remember the name of the movie right now. But yeah, Donkey Serenade. There's a in the air, and the da 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 da. I can. Yeah, it's, so I can't remember. G- 1914 to 1986. So yeah. he would have been uh, 72. Actually, Robert Alda in his time was a bigger star than than his son became. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. He was very he was very big, very well known. Okay. Uh, I've heard of it. Brian Ahern? Brian Ahern was an actor, and I I, I can't remember. I, I I believe, was he British? I, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I can't remember any movies he was in. He was like, he was a he was a character actor. You know, it was always blah, 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 and Brian Ahern. Yeah. And, <laughs> Brian Ahern. Yeah. Well, this, is a, this is a great name. I've heard the name Tallulah Bankhead. Well, Tallulah Bankhead now is, is, is really quite famous, all right? Uh, Tallulah Bankhead, for instance, was one of the women who was tested for Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. And wow. uh, she also did the last big radio show ever done called The Big Show, in which radio was trying, NBC was trying one more time to try and save radio, and they put on this hour and a half spectacular every Sunday, which had the greatest themes, had the greatest opening, just this, just really, it was big time radio, right? Uh, and um, she uh, she hosted that, and she always had this kind of weird way of talking, a Tula Bankhead darling, you know, and uh, she was a lesbian. So oh, okay. uh, that was another <laughs> before fact. it was popular. <laughs> but Tallulah Bankhead was uh, um, uh, also uh, very close friends, I believe, with um, the uh, Fitzgeralds, Zelda and uh, F. Scott, uh, if I remember correctly. I think uh, she and Zelda grew up in the same area together. How do I know these things? Yeah, you, God, you know everything about movies. You know it. Yeah, well, not everything. You know. Go well, ahead. I knew Noah Barry Jr. Oh. was on the Rockford Files, but I didn't know he had a father. <laughs> Noah Barry Sr. Yeah, yeah, there is a Noah Barry Sr. I can't remember what he looked like. I always remember Noah Barry Jr. because, among other films, he was in one of my favorite films when I was a kid called Rocket Ship XM. Uh, there's Noah Berry Jr. Okay, I got, I nailed that one. You nailed that one. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm going to try to find something obscure here. Uh, let's see, Francis X. Bushman. Oh, Francis X. It. Bushman, the first Tarzan. Are you kidding me? Wow! Look right off of it. Okay. Oh no no no! no, no excuse, me, excuse me, excuse me. I was wrong. I'm wrong. He was Ben Hur. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, because uh, Elmo Lincoln was the first Tarzan. Okay. How do I yeah. remember this shit? And I can't remember my wife's birthday. You know. So per, he was the first Ben Hur. I think he was the he was the first Ben Hur. Yes. 
Yes. Was that a silent version? That was the silent version. Okay, he was born, he was born in 1883. Yeah, yeah, it was the silent wow. version, and I think, yeah, he was. He was, uh, I believe, uh, I could look it up here uh, on IMDB or URDB or, let's see, Francis. All I have to do is probably go as far as X, and it'll, yeah, there we go. Francis X, X Bushman. Uh, known for uh, was known for Sabrina Ben Ben Hur tail yeah I'm right nailed it yeah there you <laughs> I almost didn't nail it when I said Tarzan but then then I I forgot that was Elmo Lincoln <laughs> so he had a big career with uh, Ben Hur oh well I mean he was he was a, he played Ben Hur. It's got to be big. It's a tale of the Christ. That was the subtitle. On the, it was Ben Hur, tale of a tale of the Christ. Written by Edgar Wallace. How do I know these things? Why did I just it's, say that? You're an expert where, on movies. No, but where did it come from? No, but Ben Hur was a book. I'm talking about the book by Edgar Wallace. I think I think he was something like a colonel or general or something. He also had that that title. So, well, you've got a mind like a hard drive. Uh, something like that. Yeah, uh, Lou Wallace. Excuse me. His name is Lou Wallace. General Lou Wallace. There we go. I just looked it up. Okay. I, so I got his first name wrong. But. Okay. I know you'll know this one because I kind of remember myself. I think she had a tragic aunt, Veronica Lake. Veronica Lake was a girl who had uh, hair in front of her face. Uh, it kind of dipped above above one eye. Above one eye, yes. You know. Yeah. And I think she was a better actress than anybody ever gave her credit for. Uh, she did a Preston Sturgis film called Sullivan's Travels, and she was adorable in that picture. And she didn't do the, the uh, hair over the eye thing or anything like that. Just a very good comedic actress. And a lot. I think forgotten but should be remembered because she was good and uh, but didn't she wind up like a uh, recluse or something something i don't know what the story was with her i forget now you know uh we always used to have a joke uh veronica lake she's located right next to turan bay <laughs> turan bay who by the way was a uh a mid-eastern actor uh, who appeared in a lot of movies. Okay. <laughs> now, I remember that. I think that was from a Warner Brothers cartoon, in fact. They show a map, and it says Veronica Lake, and then it says Turan Bay. You know, which are two jokes that if you showed that cartoon today, nobody would get. Exactly. Yeah. Excuse the siren outside, but my neighborhood is always on fire. Go ahead. Come on. Okay, we got. Uh, <laughs> There's a new new show we're doing here. It's going to be on every week called Stump the Host. Uh, well, Cary Grant's too obvious. Uh, Sydney Greenstreet was well, a Sydney great Green character. Street, yeah, well, uh, Maltese Falcon. Uh, right, and uh, that oddly enough, I believe was his first movie. I, I can't remember what Sydney Greenstreet did before. He was a uh, an actor, but he didn't become an actor till he was well into his fifties, maybe sixties. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then he had a very, very lucrative career. I mean, he was in. They put him in a lot of Bogart films. Uh, he was. Uh, he did a lot of just a lot of films. Um, and then he, you know, but it, but very late in life, he got an acting career. That would never happen today. <laughs> no, no. Today you're washed up at eighteen. So, okay. H.B. Warner. <laughs> now, now you've got me kind of stuck. I know the name, but I'm I trying... don't know if he. May. I wonder if he's with the Warner Brothers. H.B. Warner. No, he was another silent guy. Uh, and in fact, he and Francis X. Bushman would show up in Cecil B. DeMille sound films. Uh, uh, so H.B. Warner was. Uh, I believe he started in Silence, and I believe he worked a lot with DeMille. Okay, but that's that's the closest I've come to failing on one, but only because I can't I can't see him in my, I can't see his face in my in my memory. So, 
Ben Turpin. <laughs> ben Turpin, cross-eyed. He was cross-eyed. He was very famous for the cross-eyes. He was uh, he was silent, silent comedian. One of the ones who we don't remember, and we should. Uh, he was up there with Buster Keaton and Chaplin and all of them. He had his own kind of thing, and he would look cross-eyed. And if I showed you a picture of him, you'd know exactly who he is. You probably because his his face was is kind of the face they sometimes put to silent films. You know, they say this is you know this is what silent films were, and they show Ben Turpin with the crossed eyes. So, go well, ahead, uh, another one. The great uh, another. I think he was a comedian, Harry Langdon. Well, Harry Langdon. Was a uh, uh, he was a uh, kind of a what do you call it uh, um, a deadpan kind of like you a, den- sure. a deadpan comic who always kind of looked pathetic and uh, like he was a, he was a silent comic I wasn't crazy about Langdon uh, my friend Shecky I think likes Harry Langdon a lot uh, uh, but Langdon was a silent uh, a silent film star comic uh, okay next. Uh, Charles Farrell. Charles Farrell was uh, in um, uh, was the, was the father of My Little Margie on television, but in movies he was a he did a film with Janet Gaynor that won I think Janet Gaynor she won the first Oscar uh, uh, for a, a picture called Seventh Heaven, and uh, Farrell was the star of that film with her. Wow, really. <laughs> You're like Google when it comes to films. I have no idea where this knowledge is coming from. To tell you <laughs> it the was truth. in there. <laughs> well, it's kind of like your little talents. I think you don't know exactly where it comes from either, but you just have it. With the with the dates, yeah. And I'm surprised. You know, I thank God for the last two nights I haven't taken a Xanax. And Xanax has made me have the total inability at recalling stuff. So I'm gl- I'm not, trying not to do it so my memory won't won't go south on me. So Xanax, today, you, I take a pinch of Xanax and my memories are shot like the next day. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm trying to lay off of it. I do just a pinch myself, enough to go to go to sleep at night. But now I'm doing things like melan uh, melanoma, uh, melatonin. Melan- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm taking mal- melanoma. It's uh, it's really good for you. They, Anyway, go ahead. Another name, another name. I'm 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 amazing myself actually. I yeah, I, I think this guy was a comedian. Joe Frisco. Joe Frisco. I love Joe Frisco. So did my father. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Frisco was a uh, was a uh, a comedian as well. I can't tell you what he did exactly, but all I know is my father always loved Joe Frisco. He thought was he was he just, from here? Is that why the name? He might have been from San Francisco, for all I know. Let me wait. Hold on a second. I'll look it up. Joe Frisco. Uh, let me see here. You know, everything's on Google, folks. Joe Frisco. But I know the name, so you didn't. Uh, here we go. He, yeah, he had a cigar and a top hat, uh, and. Uh, he uh, oh he uh, performed with some of the first jazz bands in Chicago and New York City, and so he wasn't from San Francisco, and uh, okay. yeah he he, he uh, made several low budget otherwise forgettable movies, uh, and he was a, he was a vaudeville artist basically, so Joe Frisco, ta da! Go ahead. You're, un- you're uh, unstoppable. Uh, let's see. Uh, this this sounds very English. Donald Crisp. Donald Crisp is, was, was British, uh, and the only film that I can remember that I think he was in was How Green Was My Valley, which, by the okay. way, if you ever buy the film or anything, uh, it was the first, I believe it was the first feature uh, with a stereo soundtrack. Jeez, really? Yeah. It's unbelievable. You know this. This is incredible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Howard De Silva. Howard De Silva was a very good New York actor. Uh, uh, considered, uh, I think, was he actor's studio? I don't know. I would have to ask my friend Jack Garfine. De Silva, if I showed you his face, you've seen him in a, in a lot, a lot of movies. He never was a star. But he always was a with, okay? 
Mm-hmm. And uh, he was a he was a great actor. He was a go-to guy that they used. I'm trying to remember some of the films he might have been in. Hold on a second. Again, with this time, we go over to IMDb. Uh, Howard De Silva. Howard De Silva. Da, oh, here we go. Howard De Silva uh, movies. Um, what? Uh, the Blue Dahlia. They Live by Night. You know. The Lost Weekend, uh, uh, you know, seventeen seventy good, good movie. Seventeen seventy six. Uh, so, um, Mommy Dearest, he was in. In other words, you probably, if, if I showed you his face, you'd say, "Oh, I know him. Yeah, I've seen him a dozen times." You know. Okay. But he's he's one of those actors that fits under that category of. Uh, wasn't that the what well, they had a the documentary about it? The guy that was in that thing, that's the name of it. The guy yeah. that was in that thing. Well, he was. He's probably could have the the lead in the guy who was in that thing. So, the movie. well, those are actually great careers to have. You make money. Oh, and, yeah, and uh, you work constantly. You work, you work constantly. constantly. Yeah, you don't have like a three year career making millions and millions of dollars, and then you're depressed because you're not that big anymore. You just, right. You know. You dole out your career, and you have one for 30, 40, 50 years. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one I know is uh, has a connection to uh, Hearst, and that's all I know would be Marion Davies. Well, of course. Uh, she, uh, Marion Davies is one of the most interesting people, I think, and one of the most misunderstood people. Um, and, and, I, and when I say misunderstood people, I'm also quoting Orson Welles who many times was accused of making the woman that uh, um, Citizen Kane or John Foster Kane marries in uh, the Citizen Kane as being modeled after uh, uh, Marion Davies. And, well, it could be assumed because that's exactly the relationship that Hearst had with Marion Davies. She was his paramour. I don't think they never got married. But when he, in 1929, when all of a sudden he was on the edge of losing his empire, okay, all the newspapers, all the radio stations, all the TV stations, his movie uh, company, so on. Marion Davies, who was his girlfriend and who he uh, financed to a lot of films, she had spent her money wisely and became the owner of, are you ready? Stand by Columbus Circle in New York. Wow. So she, even in the Depression, stayed wealthy. A lot of people did because they had their money invested elsewhere than the stock market. And she had enough money, gave Hearst a million dollars and pulled him out of the uh, uh, out of bankruptcy. Holy Christ. Yeah. That's, a, that's a loyal woman. Yep. And, and, and she was a great silent comedian. But the problem was Hearst wanted to do serious pictures, so she went and did serious pictures. But the comedian, um, uh, uh, Marion Davies, was a superb comedian. Just really? wonderful. Just wonderful. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, because uh, when you watch Citizen Kane, uh, you just think she was probably she was a, some she was uh, a no chi- talent. A, ch- a chippy, yeah. No, she, yeah, yeah. she literally <laughs> saved William Randolph Hearst's entire fortune yeah well that's uh yeah that's, she was uh, no okay, bimbo yeah. she was no bimbo anyway next you got a couple uh, of about two minutes left. Fran- i know this is a guy this uh, all i know is this had a sad ending francis farmer francis farmer committed suicide didn't she yeah uh no 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 she was she was killed she had a well, she had a lobotomy, no, oh, no, no, right? no, 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 no. Yeah, you're right. This is the one I'm probably bad on. She had a lobotomy. Yeah, she was. In, she went crazy, and they gave her a lobotomy, and they made a movie called Francis. It starred uh, Jessica. What, what was her name? Jessica Lange. Jessica Lange. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is okay. I've by heard the way, by before. the way, produced by produced by uh, Mel Brooks. Go ahead. Anyway. Oh, was wow. Oh, yeah. This she. I'm just curious because this one died at the age of like, 30, 30. Five, uh, Jeannie Eagles. I can't tell you much about her. I, I know, okay. I've heard the name. I know the name. They made a movie about her life with, 
I'm trying to remember who played Jeannie Eagles. Maybe Kim Novak? Uh, but they, I they, think that's right, because I vaguely remember. I just remember that name. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I remember it more because they made a movie about her than I ever saw a movie with Jeannie Eagles in it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you got time for one more. One more. One more. This is, uh, well, I know a little bit. I know this guy from one movie. I thought it was one of the greatest comic performances ever, Tom Yule. Tom Yule, of course, Seven Year Itch. Um, awesome uh, in that. Yeah, absolutely awesome. And he lasted for quite a while as a character actor in TV and movies and so on. And, you know, had a good career. Give I me, think get... he had a small part in Beretta. That's the only other thing I remember him on. Oh, really? Okay. Give, yeah. Give me one more. Robert Blake. Give me one more. Give me, give me your best shot because we're, we're at 25 minutes now. But give me your best shot. Give me the best shot. Uh, J.C. Flippin. I know who J.C. Flippin is. I can see him in my uh, eyes. He did, I think, quite a few John Ford pictures. Again, he was another with actor. You know? Okay, uh, Linda but, Darnell. Linda Darnell, uh, I, I can see her in, uh, in, in if I close my eyes. And uh, she did a lot of movies, too. With, she was one of those stars. You know, you had these stars that were stars for several years, and they would be in films. And then all of a sudden, whatever happened to Linda Darnell? Okay. Know? And Robert probably, Cummings. Well, Robert Cummings, come on. I love that Bob. And uh, Robert Cummings was also the star of Alfred Hitchcock's Saboteur. Saboteur. Uh, and, oh, I thought he was just a TV actor. No, oh no, he was in. He was also in Hitchcock's uh, uh, only 3D movie, uh, Dial M for Murder. Yeah, wow. No, he was. He was. He was very much an actor before he was a TV star. That was the end of his career. Yeah. So anyway, how did I do? I'll give you a, a ninety-nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're uh, amazing. I, I, you know something? I didn't know I was this amazing till you just tested me. Yeah, okay. Can yeah. I give you one? Because I love this name. One more? Okay, one more. We got time. Well, fuck it, got, fuck it, fuck it. Name, no, nobody's Lash gonna... LaRue. Lash LaRue. Well, his name was, um, his real name was, uh, he had another name that he used, and I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, did it, did it, does it have a first name there for him? Jack? I think it was Jack LaRue. Uh, uh, no, Jack LaRue. Uh, I think Jack LaRue and Lash LaRue were the same. Hold on a second. Uh, let me see here. Let me get, go back to my IMDb. Uh, Lash. I, mean, I bet if I put in Lash, there's only one name. Uh, Lash LaRue. Here we go. Um, I, I'm trying to remember if he was... Um, he looked so much like superstar Humphrey Bogart... The character actress Sarah Patton asked if the two were related. Uh, I, I, I'm just trying to remember if he also had a f career later on as Jack LaRue. Let me just see here. Let me look up Jack LaRue. But uh, Lash LaRue was, you know, he did, he had a whole, um, uh, no, uh, uh, no, Jack LaRue was a different actor. Uh, La okay. Lash LaRue was a Saturday morning, you know, w Western guy. Oh, okay. Uh, and I can't even, I can't remember who his, he had, uh, he had a, a, you know, a sidekick, but I can't remember who the actor was. It might have been Smiley Burnett, but I can't remember. Um, but that's, yeah, so I, I, I did okay on Lash LaRue. You're amazing. I, I knew who Jesus. Lash LaRue was. I just thought maybe it was also Jack LaRue and he wasn't Jack LaRue okay. or somebody else. So. I did 99%, would you say? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, you're amazing. God, I'm a, how do I know these things? You know, sometimes people do things like this where they test your memory on something, and all of a sudden you realize you know more about it than you thought you did. Um, yeah, well, well, you must. You obviously love movies as a kid, well, so I think all this knowledge is just stuck in the brain. Well, I had a guy on the air once uh, who wrote a book called The Encyclopedia of the Old West. And... Uh, I started talking to him. I started coming up with all kinds of facts about the Old West and so on. And it was a knowledge I didn't know I had. It's that, like Yeah, as, I didn't know you as had As you that. go through life like a tumbleweed, these little things attach themselves to you, you know, and you don't know you're, you're acquiring all this information, but for some reason it was important to you. 
So uh, I, I, I did better on this than I thought I would have done. If you'd said, well, let's try this, uh, and I'll, I'll say, well, I'll try my best. But I, I amazed myself. Yeah, I was amazed. Either that or you didn't pitch me any hard ones. Well, you didn't. You I didn't. Could, you didn't I, bring up Louise Fazenda. Anyway, <laughs> listen. <laughs> we spent more time with you today than we ever have in the past, and it's always well worth it to talk. I thought that was fun. I, I love this stuff. To talk with Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. We'll do it again. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And thank you very much, Bubbles. That was uh, that was enjoyable. All right, we have to do that again. I, uh, I, you know, stump the host. That's the that's the name of the segment. Uh, but it amazed me that I could answer all of those. But uh, I made one mistake. I said uh, Charles. Uh, I said uh, John Foster Kane for Citizen Kane. It's Charles Foster Kane. Why I fucked up on that i have no idea when i was so good about everything else uh but um it was charles foster kane anyway uh but that's uh, that's it for bubbles and now uh we sit here waiting wait a minute i gotta get rid of uh, my music here i gotta bring up the skype and then let me let me just clean this up a little bit here uh i have to uh uh, I didn't uh, clean it up before I went on the air, which I should do. There we go. It's been cleaned up. And now I will go online. Oh, wow. So now uh, I, uh, people can, uh, can call me, and uh, I guess they're going to. They will, uh, hopefully. Uh, and we're sitting here waiting for people to call. Okay, I got that done. Okay. So, uh, you know, you, uh, you know, my life, I, I've decided my life is boring. What, Alex? Your life is, how is your life boring? No, I, you know, I used to have an exciting life. You know, if I had to do uh, my life in the passing lane based on my life now, it would last about five minutes. Because, really, I have no exciting adventures to report to you. But I do have an exciting person uh, to talk to here who just joined us. Ladies and gentlemen, boy, you're you are looking more and more like, I'm trying to figure out who the hell, I want to get, let me get rid of that. Uh, who, who the hell uh, you look like with that. With I that. look like Trump's old doctor. Really? You No, you don't. No, Bel believe me, you, I would uh, kill yourself if you feel you look like uh, Trump's old doctor. Did you see? Did you see him today on TV? I mean, Doctor Feelgood, whatever his name is, Doctor Bobinick or B -B 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 yeah, I, or... I don't know, but yeah, the one that got his uh, office raided or whatever, he was complaining. And I said, I told my wife, I love his hair. <laughs> you know something? If I had that man as my doctor, uh, I would wish I was dead. You know, I mean, it, 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 does he? Does does that doctor with his looks? engender any kind of confidence in him as a doctor <laughs> no not at all i wish i had a picture of him i could bring up right now and everybody could see what we're talking about but his doctor trump's doctor said that short about two weeks after he became president uh his trump's goons came into his office a lawyer and his bodyguard and they yeah. ransacked his office of, of all the stuff on 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 uh on Trump, uh, all the uh, all the uh, without any kind of warrant or anything like that. Now, why they did that, I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, hi, 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 uh, uh, Phil. But well, I think um, Mr. Perulis had his hand up there. He was just waving at Phil. Oh, he was just waving at Phil. Oh, I see. I think. Oh, I think. yeah. I made a I made a date with Phil. A couple of dates. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope. Oh, you... we'll t we'll tell you about it. Yeah, I'll I, tell you about it. It's I, fun. I can't get. I can't uh, speak for how well he gives head, but you know. <laughs> uh, I suck. I'm very, I'm uh, selfish. Well, that's good. <laughs> very, very selfish, right? So no, but here's here's the deal. So he this doctor uh, said that they came into his office. And then they immediately ransacked it for all the materials on Trump. And they didn't even, like, 
give him copies or anything like that, which a doctor probably should have just for his own records, just in case somebody ever wants to say he did something wrong or something, you know. Uh, and it was, uh, it, it was it, pretty shocking. So, of course, anything like this becomes the big news of the day, right? You know. Right. The, the guy who ransacked the office, uh, uh, was he was that his position or job to get that information? Or was he doing Head ransacker? Is that? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I, I thought that whoever did it was uh, like an I, aide. Oh, I just said he was his bodyguard, Trump's bodyguard, yeah, a, yeah. and his, I think, a lawyer. Ah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know. Don't try it. Don't try about, it. You're going to try and excuse it. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're talking it. about the admiral, right? No. no. Uh, oh, oh, this is a We're different. We're talking uh, about, remember, Dr. I don't even know. I forget what his name was, but he looks weird. He, he looked like a guy you wouldn't want to have as a doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He looks like okay. like Scott looks right now when he does that with his hair. Okay, that that was the guy <laughs> yeah, right. uh, that gave him a quick bill of health before he was elected. Yes. Okay. And, and he came back and said that Trump dictated that letter to him to write. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I was saying to myself, I don't see resemblance be, between the admiral. And uh, and Scott, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah, no, this is a different guy. But you don't pay attention to the news that much. The old Scott, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. But here, here's the deal. Here's the here's here's the deal. Um, uh, he, um, th this doctor, uh, wrote the letter saying how wonderful he was, but had it dictated by Trump, and that's kind of interesting because what kind of a doctor is this guy? You know, that he would even allow that to happen. If I went to my doctor and said, okay, now here's what you're going to write in your report about my health. He'd tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they did. He would call you a fucking idiot. He'd call me an idiot. You know, you know we, 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 don't, we don't do that. That's not the way we do business in the medical profession. You know. So, I mean, it's... Uh, boy, it's... Uh, I just, you know, I, uh, I, I, all weekend long, I've been reeling under this whole thing of Trump wanting a Nobel Peace Prize before he's ever, <laughs> before he's ever done anything, you know. Well, the South Korean president feels he should have. Well, the it. South Korean president is probably sucking Trump's dick because. There's no way Trump is getting a Nobel Peace Prize because they don't want him in Oslo or wherever in Norway they I don't, give those. He uh, was cheating on Kim Jong Un. They were holding hands, yeah. Uh, yeah. jumping over the curb together. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, if we're going to give a Nobel Peace Prize, okay, given what Trump notes as being his reason for getting a Nobel Peace Prize, uh, really. Uh, it should go to that uh, bit basketball player. What's his name? Uh, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. He should get the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> because he was running around saying, ah, this guy's okay. You could really do business with him long before anybody thought about doing business with him. I mean, I Dennis that. Rodman doesn't look so crazy right now, does he? Did you see that Rodman documentary that they did on the uh, visit? No. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I did. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, everybody was calling him crazy and he's nuts and why is he doing this and all that. And yet, that may have been the opening salvo to getting mm -hmm. the West to talk with him because he left him books by Donald Trump and so on, like Art of the Deal and so on, and said, read these, you'll get an idea of what he's like and what he's about. And I thought Seth Rogen that uh, opened no, up no, the channel. No, not at all. <laughs> But uh, uh, so I think Dennis Rodman should get the Nobel Peace Prize b before Trump. Oh. Hey, Alex, hasn't uh, Dennis Rodman's wife been on your show? I, I was talking to her somewhere. I can't forget. She's a blonde. And uh, I, I, she was married to him. Uh, maybe it was on a Burning Man thing. I, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think so. I don't remember it. Wasn't there uh, some yeah. model that was uh, married to him, like a Baywatch type? Yeah, right. Uh, uh, I'm was, trying to think of her name. I met her. I talked to her sometime. Well, I, he didn't marry I Pamela Anderson, did he, for a short time? No. No, no. 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 It was a different one. It was a brunette. Yeah. 
thought. Oh, I thought it was she. Well, the lady I talked to was a blonde, but you know, she might have dyed her hair or something. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Did she say she was on my show? I thought so. Uh, oh, well, could well be. I don't know. You know, uh, I had a lot of guests on my <laughs> shows in those days. <laughs> And, hey, uh, I got a name for you, uh, Paul Ashley. Karma Electra, someone said. What? Uh, I was just reading on the chat. That's, that's, Karma that's, Electra. Karma Electra. Electra. Yes, yes, he was Roko married to Karma. <coughs> Thank you, Roko. That was yeah. his wife. Yeah, uh, for a short yes. period of time. Short period of time. Karma Electra. Shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Paul Ashley, uh, identified uh, from your previous guest. Yeah, you know it's a. Uh, a TV personality Paul from Ashley? the 50s. Well, I, I'm not good on television personalities because there are so many oh, of them. Okay. Well, there's so many of them. You know, that they, the, 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 uh, Paul Ashley, uh, you, are you sure you got the name correct? Oh, yeah. I worked for him. Uh, had the, a show called the Rudy Kazuti uh, Puppet Show on oh, TV. Oh, that wasn't, <laughs> the reason I don't know of him is because Rudy Kazuti wow. was not West Coast. Yeah, that's East right. Coast. It was East Coast. It, or I thought it was Central, like Chicago. In those days when you had yeah. TV shows for kiddies, uh, yeah. they were the East Coast. They were all local, you know. Yeah. And so everybody remembers, yeah. you know, remembers Rudy Kazuti here in New York. And they remember, uh, you know, Wonderama and things like that. And yet Captain Kangaroo. we never had that out in, out in California. The only thing that was all syndicated around the country were two things. Bozo the Clown. There were a lot of bozos <laughs> around the country, one of which is in the White House right now. We go. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and Romper Room was another syndicated kid what show. What's the one yeah. that had the sock puppet? All Jerry the, Lewis. All, all, Jerry. all of them had sock puppets. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> was Sherry Lewis... East Coast, or she's still alive. Sherry no, Lewis, she was, no, Sherry Lewis was uh, national, East, but East by Coast. that time it was national. But yeah. but when I was a kid growing up, those shows were local, except for uh, Howdy Doody was national. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, so that's you know, but what are we talking about that for anyway? Mm. And because you got us off on Rudy Kazuti. I mean, I know who Rudy Kazuti was. I've I've seen, in fact the kinescopes of the Rudy Kazuti show. Yeah, wow, yeah. Well, that was one of my jobs uh, in college, first jobs in TV. Uh, he was uh, redoing his show, uh, except with new puppets for kids' TV. Yeah. And I got I got hired to do the set backgrounds. So uh, I, I was, uh, you know, a junior in college, I think, in the yeah. uh, East Coast. And, you know, he was doing his uh, show. In uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Wow. wow. Abby Hoffman's from Worcester, Massachusetts. Yes, he's from Worcester, Massachusetts, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, in fact, what did Abby used to say about the town? It's famous for something else besides Abby Hoffman. Uh, Miss no. Woe Diamond. Sauce. But, but, no, there's one other person that was from there. Uh, and you uh, put them together me. with Abby Hoffman and you'd go, boy, you know. I can't remember now, though. Really Jerry remember. Rubin? No, 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 Jerry no, no, no. Jerry Rubin wasn't wasn't from Wooster. There was somebody, somebody from there. Somebody was born up there when he was growing up. That you know, they knew each other or something. Anyway, be that as it may. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, but uh, you know the, this whole Nobel Prize thing has just been it just been beyond uh, this crowd chanting Nobel, Nobel. Like, you know, it's like they've cheapened this prize now down to a chant, you know. Uh, and the only reason he wants one is because uh, uh, Obama got one. Now, anybody that wants to argue that Obama shouldn't have, I'd probably agree with. Uh, he, he didn't do enough to uh, want one. But they liked him. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. You get it? They liked yeah. him. Now, you watch. When they don't give him the Nobel Peace Prize, because I don't think there's a... There's a chance of a snowball in hell that they will, especially since he's now been begging for it like a crying little wimpy baby. Um, when they don't give it to him, watch the tweets. The fake Nobel Prizes, you know. 
He'll he'll, he'll start doing his little little. Thing. Hey, if the Nobel Prize is a personality contest, it isn't. It, is it fake. isn't, but it isn't a personality contest. We That's, just said it was. They they gave it to no, Obama no, no, because I they like. No, they well they they gave it to Obama because they think they really felt that he engendered in his writings and things like that piece. Okay, it was and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, the only difference is that Obama got a million dollars, as you get the, when you get the Nobel Peace Prize, you get a million dollars, and he, of course, gave it to charity. Trump will probably keep it for himself. Henry Trump, Kissinger got the Nobel Peace Prize, too. Yeah, yeah. Martin Luther King yeah. got the Nobel Peace Prize. And you're putting these people up in the same category with Donald Trump? I mean, he, you if know, it's, he o had, it's okay no, if it, it's okay. It's like a party you're asked, you're invited to. It's not something you go out and lobby for. You don't run for the Nobel Peace Prize. If right? he ends the nuclear threat in the Korean Peninsula, uh, I think he deserves well, it. Well, he's not. He, he wouldn't be ending it. Uh, Kim Jong un would be ending it. The he South should Korean get the peace president. Prize. Kim Jong un. If, Kim Jong un <laughs> should probably. Yeah, that's it. Give him the peace prize along with Donald Trump. You know, double a double ceremony. Yeah. Do they both get the medal in? And by the way, by the way, Shit. you know, he there's no peace to be found in in North Korea. There's only a threat in North Korea. There's a peace to be found in Syria. There's a peace to be found in many other countries in the world. But there's no peace to be found in North Korea. It's just stopping the nuclearization. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Of the of the uh, Korean Peninsula is not in and of itself an act of creating peace. Uh, tell that to the Japanese and uh, tell that to uh, well, the Americans. I'll be happy. I'll, I'll be happy to tell that to the Japanese, and I think the Japanese would probably agree with me that that is not in and of itself brokering peace. Okay, because there's no war to broker well, peace for. What was he created uh, a uh, situation where yeah, Kim he hasn't Jong done he hasn't done shit? Yeah, he uh, he created. Uh, Do you know who uh, did? You know who did the most? The Chinese. Yeah. The Chinese did the heavy lifting on that one when he went. Do you remember that Kim Jong Un took his little train, choo choo train, to Beijing, and he met with the Chinese Communist Party. And came back, and all of a sudden, he was making nice to everybody. I wonder what was kind right. of deal bingo, was. Bingo, bingo. I, I wonder it was who, peace through power, and that's what Reagan did, and that's how he brought down uh, communism. He didn't bring communism down communism. Brought down communism. He didn't bring down Reagan. communism. He bankrupted. He bankrupted the USSR. No, and, he didn't. Uh, no, he didn't. You're you're really who's 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 feeding you this crap? That's, I'll, I'll get him. I'll set him straight, Alex. Okay, don't worry. set him I'll straight. Set him go straight. ahead, John. Set him straight now. Don't wait. no. When when we ha go on our date, then I'll, no, I'll, no, you know, no. Set him straight him now. You know. Well, uh, I, I, so I China China is still in business as a communist organization. Uh, yeah, it's it's like communist. I yeah. can't remember uh, their names, but they're they're a far cry from communism, Jeff. And yeah. You know, you know, look at their economy. Now, if you want to talk about communism, why don't you look at Venezuela and see how good they're doing? What, well, they're now, uh, what is this? What about oh. ism again? Yeah. <laughs> what is what, what the fuck? What, what, fu what, what the fuck? What the fuck does some entertainer? What the fuck does what, what the fuck count. does Venezuela have to do with the Soviet Union? They're one of the last communists. They're not communists. Who's communist? Venezuela. Well, but yeah, well, but what not. does it have to do with with the Soviet with Russia? They're not well, communists. Jeff said that communism was working well in China, and I said China isn't really communist no, no. anymore. Oh, no, China They're is absolutely abso the only thing that's communist no, about. No, them hold is on a second. Hold on a second. China is absolutely a communist country. There is no question about it. And Hong Kong and all of these other things that they run and the and the Hong Kong uh, Hong Kong was separate from China until it was then ceded back to China by by uh, agreement back in, in I think it was two thousand nineteen ninety nine and and that was the first time that they really did any real kind of commerce because Hong Kong was all, already making a ton of money and right. so now they, they, their they their economy started to prosper after that uh, 
Well, take, but they no, no, no. It goes all the way back to uh, uh, Nixon. Uh, no, no. I'm thinking of the Chinese leader, um, Deng Xiaoping. Oh. Oh. He was the one that instituted the first uh, cracklings of uh, uh, capitalism in China. He allowed a certain area of China to engage in capitalism to see how it would work. D Deng Xiaoping realized and felt that the country could not survive under a purely communistic uh, 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 economic so, form. And so therefore, he experimented. And actually, it was the undoing of Deng Xiaoping. The Communist Party did not like him doing it. Of course not, because they uh, would go in and they'd did take you all ever the hear? Did you ever hear of Deng Xiaoping? Yes. Well, tell me something about him. I can't tell you much more than you just told me. Well, you've uh, you probably heard, you've told heard, you've more heard, than I knew before. Well, I know a lot about Deng Xiaoping. Tell me yeah. about his interview with Mike Wallace. I didn't watch his interview with Mike Wallace. Well, you should have because it was some very uh, it was a very interesting p point that he brought up when Mike Wallace said to him on 60 Minutes, uh, you're engaging in capitalism in China now. I thought you hated capitalism. He says, no, capitalism isn't bad. It's the people that do it that are. You know, oh. that, that, that if you're going to have capitalism, it should benefit everyone, not just big business. Except it usually just benefits well, the leaders I'm, of China. I'm telling you what he said. Yeah, you know? but the truth is... That it benefits no, the leader now, of China. When, when, I mean, uh, yeah, but Deng Xiaoping was not one of those people who was like the criminal element in China who was running it and, and looting it at the same time. Okay? Yes, uh, John. Yeah, uh, one uh, really fantastic quote I remember was from Donald Rumsfeld commenting on uh, uh, Chinese capitalism. And he said they have the best system ever because they don't have a Congress. Uh, modifying uh, their right. corporations. They have the most ideal form of capitalism in the world, uh, capitalism modified by communism. Well, so there you uh, go. I'll give you a good example. Yep. Uh, 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 that, that they, they said, uh, I think it was about five years ago, that within five years, something like 75% of all China would have Wi-Fi. And over 75% of China now has Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they also okay. said, they also said, we're going to do a fast rail system uh, all over the country, and it is slowly, it has been being built. And be, and it was basically because they just say, make it so, and it gets done. There's no Congress sitting around bitching about it or crying about it. They just you do it. Huh? No EPA. You, you, don't, you, don't like, you don't like that. You're the guy who's always calling for regulations, and have so I, you have, don't. Uh, no, your, I, uh, well, when have I called? Tell me a regulation I've called for. <laughs> Oh, uh, you bitch and moan when uh, Trump cuts <laughs> EPA reg well, regulations. Well, no, I'm cut, no, I'm griping about him cutting EPA regulations because those regulations are protecting my fucking lungs, Phil. Yeah, and the Chinese, you can't breathe the air. I there. know, I know. Same with India. So it, it's it's but, time well, India, that they started. India has cleaned theirs up. You know, you love to live in generalities, and and your thoughts about places in the world are are old. They're seated in the past and not in the present. That's okay. And by the way, when I was in Beijing, there wasn't a, a lot of smog there. I know they have a problem with it, but um, they, they didn't seem to have a problem with it at the point. Shanghai was, was awful when I was there. Really? I mean, uh, you'd uh, take your hand anywhere on a building and wipe it down, and uh, then your hand would be yeah. uh, dark brown with coal soot. I mean, there there were no living trees in Shanghai. The river is completely dead. It, it's a it's a nightmare. Yeah. I, I I I was repulsed by the city. Yeah. On the other hand, I didn't see that kind of problem in Beijing, but it may well have been. I saw, yeah. I, I what seemed to be smog, but I don't know in in in, in Gulen in the Lu, Li on the Li River in the early morning. But that just been it might have been morning haze. Okay. Did they uh, restrict? where you could travel and where what you could see when you were visiting China? Oh, yes, everywhere. They had somebody following us everywhere we went. And when we'd use the yeah, telephones at the hotel, you know, they, we, they'd be listening in on every word that we said. Of course. Yeah. Uh, just, just like yeah. uh, you can't use certain... Phil, uh, I went... Uh, I, use Facebook or... I went anywhere I wanted to go. 
Okay. All right, well, that was the question, Smarty. Well, the answer is, fuck you. You're not getting the answer you want. <laughs> fuck you, too. <laughs> hey, I got Pete's French roast directly from Pete's. It was Ooh. food. Uh, they, they roasted it on April 24th. So nice, fresh French roast Pete's. No K-cup. Yeah, well, I don't use the K cup. I use the I use the uh, fillable K cups now, and yeah. I and I get myself some ground um, uh, pizza. I use the Big Bang, which is the Ethiopian blend, and it's uh, it was sent to me quite fresh. Okay, yeah. so it's just like your attitude. Yeah, so, and I, <laughs> but I, I put it in the I put it in this uh, this uh, non plastic K cup. Yeah. Uh, thing and uh, I brew it uh, and it uh, tastes. Re it's really good. It's really terrific. You know. Right. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. I gotta tell you something. This is this. Is, this just drives me fucking bananas. Okay. What is it, Alex? Okay, let me tell you. So I order. Uh, it's time for me to. I have tea every night, so it's time for me to order some more tea. So I decide I'm gonna. Not, I don't want to run out of tea. I'll order 48 k cups of tea. Right. And while I'm at it, I needed a uh, I needed a, a cord for a microphone, so I ordered that too. All right, pretty simple order. In the microphone. Yeah, yeah. They, they were all they were all coming in the same order for some reason. Right. Okay, because I ordered them about the same time. So uh, I, I, I come home. Uh, I come home. I'm hanging out. We're here, and I get a message on my email. Uh, UPS tried to deliver, but there was nobody there. Well, I was here. I was here, and I was here where, where I could actually hear the doorbell, okay, which is in the other part of the room. But when I'm in the studio, I can hear it. Can't hear it when you're down the hall a little bit in the bedroom for some reason, but I can hear it here. Maybe they went to L instead they of I. They never did. You know, then there's a note downstairs. Oh, sorry we missed you. Well, no, you weren't, because if you really wanted to see me, you could have just rung the right bell or do it right. So now I call uh, uh, Amazon, and I'm yelling and screaming because I'm sick of this. Happens all the time, and they said, "Well, let me let's let's check because they just left five minutes ago from your apartment. Let's check with uh, with UPS and see." Probably and then she said, "You're a complainer," she, she gets and they cut you off. She gets back to me and she says, "No, he can't go back." I went, "Well, we were here, you know," so. Um, they said, well, Monday they can deliver again. And this is on Friday. I'm going, oh, Monday. Okay, fine. Okay. So I waited around all day for the package, by the way. Now Monday comes. I wait all day for the package again. No package. And there's a note uh, online. The address is wrong. Now, look, the address is never wrong when it comes from Amazon. I've been using the same address over and over and over again. So now I'm really phoning up uh, them. And then they put me on to UPS, and I yell at UPS. And I just said, you know, well, we can't do anything except deliver it again tomorrow. And now I'm in a froth. I'm just going crazy, you know. Because, come on, you know, I've spent two days waiting for a fucking stupid little package with some tea and a cable so that I can get it if you deliver it. Why don't they just leave it at the door? Why do because, you have to be home? Because obvious. Because I have. We have a gate. They get in there. Then there's a door downstairs, and they ring up, and we let them in. Okay, because we there are three so-called buildings in this courtyard. Uh, but they couldn't. Uh, they couldn't. Uh, uh, and so uh, I, the address was wrong. I'm sorry. The address is always right. You know, it's eight dash i, and I always do a lowercase i so it doesn't look like an l. Okay. Um, <laughs> they come back today and they deliver the thing. Finally, it gets delivered. You know, after all my yelling. In fact, I, I went online to the Facebook page for UPS and wrote a big... I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, yeah. <laughs> did you, where did you see it? You went over to UPS? No, I mean, uh, I saw your Facebook page uh, complaining about UPS. You made a Facebook post. Oh, I made a... No, I made, did a message. Oh, well, they put uh, the whole post is there. No, no, no. Just your comment. Oh, that's all. Just my comment. Anyway, and they were very nice. They got a hold of me. Oh, we're so sorry. Well, blah, blah, blah. We'll make sure it gets you. Well, it got to me today. 
I look at what happened. Here's what happened. First of all, the first guy should have rung up. He didn't ring up or he pushed the wrong button or something or didn't. Obviously, it's somebody who doesn't know the building. OK, otherwise they would have known that I take a lot of stuff's delivered to Bennett Schwarzman in 8i. Right. And even if it didn't have a, an apartment number, they'd know where to come. That was in the old days when you when you knew your UPS driver. <laughs> but you don't anymore because it could be any fool who's got the job who's, you know, drooling as he drives. Um, and um, I, I looked at it and, yeah, the address was right that was mailed to me and then it was like uh there it was like a sticker that was pasted on so i peeled that and there was another sticker they had pasted on like uh -huh. when they didn't deliver it they then made up another sticker and put it on there and then <clears throat> when they delivered it again they made another sticker and put it on there the one underneath they forgot to write the i it was their fault you know amazon yeah it, no not amazon ups because oh. they would keep making a new sticker every time they made a delivery. I you get what I'm saying? Like if all of a sudden I, I picked up one at the, uh, at the UPS store for Marjorie, and they had a sticker over the Amazon address that said UPS store. Okay. Yeah. So it was their fault, you know. And, I mean, I literally wasted three days waiting for this stupid package. And they and didn't this, seem this, to give a shit. This yeah. service is going to run you another $20 uh, this year. Not me. Why? Because I'm on Shecky's dime. <laughs> okay. So uh, what happens when you order something? Uh, is your credit card in Shecky's account? N no. I am Shecky. Shecky, as a Prime member, could mm -hmm. have somebody as another person on his account okay so, so you're a ward of the court his, so he put me on his account and i have my own credit card there and everything now i get amazon prime television through marjorie because she has her own account which i've we've just never i've never gotten on to hers you know and she won't let you <laughs> no, that's right that's right but anyway so uh, that's how i'm on but i you know i mean i just come on i just want my stuff you know, I don't want to have to go through this shit. And I don't want to be told I'm not here when I am here. It meant you didn't try hard enough. And, and again, it, it goes to that problem of I used to know my UPS driver. He used to come all the time, deliver the stuff. Hi, how are you? Here, it's Christmas. Here's 20 bucks, you know. Thanks so much, you know. How's everything with your wife? Oh, fine, thank you. I haven't seen him in the longest time. They I, have too many deliveries now, and they can't spend any time bullshitting with you. And no, and no, it isn't a matter of bullshitting with me. I don't want them to have to bullshit with me. But I'd like, I, but but the guy knew who I was, so the package was mislabeled or whatever. When you you sent that um, um, mini uh, Mac, uh, right. you sent it to the wrong address. Right. I put uh, eight a eight eight L, which is another building. And, right. I, and I had to run around like crazy. I, I chased down a truck, but he knew the guy who knew the guy. And when I finally went down to do something, the next thing I knew was the door was opening up and it was UPS saying, here's your package. I took it up to 8L because that's, that's where it was. You crap before and used 8L. No, because... you couldn't have. No, it, then, it, then it didn't get to me. It did. Well, uh, well, I sent you a hat from the uh, Oakland A's you wanted. Well, I'm telling you now that uh, that you must or have said something the, else. Thing, it's a uh, you know well, one of those there's uh, also, gray. There's uh, also another possibility. It might have been in the days when I had the same driver all the time, and he knew that it was mislabeled, misaddressed. And I used your uh, uh, your moniker. You know, I used uh, Alex Bennett. I, I think yeah. I well, I mean, Bennett. you could do that, or you could do Bennett Schwarzman. They know both, but I mean, they don't know both now. But he knew both. So, I mean, that's maybe the reason it got to me. But this time you had the wrong one. But the guy was nice enough. I mean, I have to Same give one is last time. <laughs> no, I have to give UPS credit that they were nice enough that the guy went, oh, well, that's uh, that's because I took it up to this apartment that it was labeled to. Otherwise, I would have never gotten it. Yeah. Yeah. So we dodged the bullet on that one. So, well, uh, whatever you sent me and it was a couple of years ago was your address and uh, it, it looked like an L. 
<laughs> you know? Well, that's the problem. That's why when I when I spell it for people, when you're on a typewriter, if, you, if I ever send you my email, it's eight dash lowercase i, yeah. so you know it's an i. Let me look in your contacts. Uh, my contacts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But you know, an L has is a line and then a line across. It's an L. That's a lowercase L. No, it's not a lower. Well, I guess you could say it was a lowercase L. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? What? Uh, maybe I changed it because it says eight dash lowercase I. Oh uh, well. So uh, if everybody have a drink, feel fucked up again. Oh no, I, yeah. I, it was probably an L originally, and I fixed it after the uh, mini mac thing oh i see oh yeah. i see okay yeah. but uh, oh boy i have a sinus oh, killing me right now oh uh, faye has the sinus thing too today she's uh no i mean but suddenly i'm getting a little bleh here you know yeah. and marjorie is sick she's got some kind of horrible cold and i don't know where she got it you know and i'm just hoping i don't get it now you know and then I went out yesterday and I had Chinese food and I gained three pounds. Yeah. Look at the nice well, doors at Jeff's place. Yeah. I, uh, you're not listening to me. Yeah. Yeah. Gained three pounds. So now we, we went out for, uh, we went out for, uh, there's a sushi place. It's like a sushi buffet, a Japanese buffet, and it's wonderful. Did you have the rice sushi or just? No, the, uh, I didn't have any of that. But I then for the rest of the day was drinking soda like crazy because I was really thirsty because it was so filled with chuck full with sodium so that it put three pounds on me in water weight. <laughs> you know. And so tonight I ate some pecan clusters, which give me the trots and I had the trots. And now I bet I'm back down to where I was. How can you lose weight on pecan clusters? Because they, uh, these are uh, sugar free. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah, and and you do some of that sugar-free stuff, and it can make you run like uh, rocket fuel. You know, it's well, like I always thought Atkins said that just because it's sugar-free doesn't mean it's free of carbs. And uh, no, Atk Atkins is dead. Yeah, but it's ice that killed him. <laughs> oh, that's right, he slipped. Yeah, yeah, he slipped on ice and. Uh, Got laid up or something, and that screwed him up forever. No, Atkins has never said that sugar, that sugar free is bad. Is bad. Uh, there are people who argue that. See, Atkins says. Oh, he's low calorie. Low calorie. Low was calorie bad. is a different deal altogether. Yeah, but a lot of times it's low calorie because yeah, it's sugar yeah, free. No, but a lot of times it can have, it can have be full of sugar and be ca low calorie. You know, because they, well, they put low calorie because they cut the sugar in half, you know, but uh, it's still 39. What, 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 Grant, what Atkins says is that you can take all the dietary fiber and all the sugar alcohols and take them out of the total total carb count. And what's left are called net carbs. And that that's what you have to count against, because those are the ones that have impact on your on your glucose or whatever, you know. There are those that argue, though, that you should only take away half the sugar alcohols. It depends on the sugar alcohols, too, but half the sugar alcohols because they do have some kind of impact. I don't know. I don't care. But anyway, the pecan clusters uh, <laughs> are sugar-free. They use stevia in them, and uh, they are guaranteed to give me the trots, and that's exactly what I wanted. So that I could lose all that weight that I gained yesterday. I thought Pete's coffee does that too. And, and, and next thing you know, next thing you know, I'm going to be like sticking my finger down my throat and being bulimic, right? Yeah, yeah. So you might want to try uh, taking a walk once in a while. Too. You know, so <laughs> I heard dancing for the, uh, uh, dancing for the stars uh, is into. <laughs> yeah, Alex, you can go on that. Yeah. yeah. The bottom, my feet hurt when I walk because I have this this numbness in my feet now. So I, I, I have a hard time walking. I'm going to walk. I'm, I'm going to do some walking the next day or two. Get some good shoes. You know, get something that's got some support in them. I have good support in my shoes. Now, I'm not talking about your hosiery. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at yeah. your own joke, Phil. It's very bad yeah. to laugh at your own joke. 
when you laugh at your, I always hate comedians that laugh at their jokes because what they're saying to the audience, okay, you're supposed to laugh on this. Yeah, well, if I wanted you to laugh on this, I'd play the joke. Uh, Bill, the, Bill yeah. Maher drives me crazy okay. with that. He will laugh at his own joke. And, uh, and it's a cheap way of getting a laugh from the audience. You know, if it's funny, it's funny. Why can't I enjoy it? No, well, because we're not. And we're, why we're should you enjoy it if we're not? His hey, his feet hurt. He doesn't enjoy shit. My feet you know? are killing me. Oh, dogs are aching. You know. Oh, that's funny. Ooh. You, you, uh, Alex, can you ride a bike without your feet hurting? Ride a what? A bike. <laughs> then his ass would hurt. A what? A bicycle. A bike. What's that exactly? Uh, what? They used to have a really big tire in the front and then a really small one in the back. And that's. Oh, you I know, remember when those when I was a kid. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was, I was a little when fun. I was a kid and I got my first bicycle. Uh, my parents got it for me for my birthday, and we lived in Marin County, so it was great that I had a bike. All the kids had bikes, but what they all had were these in those days were these Schwins with the big balloon tires. You remember those, the Schwins? And uh, in fact, they I remember they had a little button on the side you could press it and make it go beep beep. I remember that, and I could never figure out why. I mean, you could never hear it more than two feet away from the. You know. Those are the ones that they look for in American pickers. But anyway, yeah. anyway, yeah. I used to have one. What my father bought me was what he considered to be the newest thing. It was an Indian bicycle, which was a British bicycle with thin tires. Oh, yeah. So now I was the I was the only kid in the neighborhood with this bike, right? Like this. Uh, now an English now, racer, and they probably had a three speed thing. Yeah, the whole thing, on, three, three speeds, the whole thing. Yeah, great, great bike. You know, yeah, Bali and a few other brands. Yeah, but uh, boy, did I get a ribbing from all my friends. What mm -hmm. are you, a fag? That's what I always. That's what you always got whenever it seemed too feminine to them. Are you a fag? What is a fag bike? Yeah, I had a roll fast when I was uh, really young. Uh, it was called a, a roll fast. It wasn't a Schwinn. No, that was just that a Schwinn was until that was just I when got you a tumble, That's when you tumbled downhill. Yeah, uh, really. roll fast. It uh, was uh, small. They were like twenty inch bikes. No, but, but anyway, I so I had this Indian, and uh, all the kids made fun of me. And then as as I got older, every bike was with the thin tires. You know. It was the hip thing to have, but uh, so I, you know, but no, I was just a fag for having one at school. So. Wow, you know, Alex, you really brought me back uh, with the Schwinn. I used to have one, uh, and it, I completely forgot until you just said it that there was a little button on the side where it, it blew a little horn. Yeah, you know? yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. yeah but those things, I, 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 I'm glad I never used them because, it, quite frankly, I don't know how kids survive those bikes. I mean, they were just so they were like, they were like, <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil, please, Phil. It was appropriate. <laughs> no, it wasn't appropriate. That wasn't the sound I made. It was a buzzer sound. It was like on a game. Yeah, show. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you yeah. had a buzzer. No, the, the Schwinn's had, had the buzzer. The Schwinn had one. Yeah. Did it also have a uh, like a spring in the front? Some of them uh, had yeah. those springs. Yeah, like it had a big like wire a, spring. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mine had like mine, mine, mine had the something. brakes. You know, with the Schwinn, yeah. in order to use yeah. the brake, you just took the pedals and moved them in reverse. Right. And that would yeah. that would break the uh, the the, uh, the break it. I, on the other hand, uh, mine had the hand grips. And the wow. little things oh, on yeah. the wheel. Huh? It was an English racer. Well, I know. I've, I was a fag. I had to squeeze my handles. Right. <laughs> but it was faster than I, all you know, the other bikes. I, 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 on, my, on my life in the passing lane, I did this one episode called My Life uh, Growing Up Gay. Growing up gay. And, <laughs> and the reason I, I called it that was because every time I did something, because my father you know, worked for the symphony, and I would go to the ballet, you know, and I was steeped in culture. My father took me to art shows and things like that. What are you, a fag? You know, no matter what, you got a new bike. It's, a sh it's not the typical one. It's the, you know, the Indian bike. And it, what are you, a fag? You know, now, so, did it have something on the fender uh, that looked like an Indian? 
because uh, you yeah, know when I watch no, this American no, Pickers, and on the front, on the front, like, very front of where there's a column, you know, from you yes. get the handle here and then you get a column. On that yeah. column was a picture, I think, of an Indian. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you sure it wasn't a Raleigh? No, that was another English bike. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know which one had the Indian. It was called an Indian. Indian made motorcycles. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah. They were well. They still off. are. They revived yeah, it off and on. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think they went into making bicycles for a while, and I had one. Of, I had one of those. So I would. That's say. a very cool bicycle, and it, you know, it, today it would be worth a fortune. Yeah. Look who's here! Back from vacation. Hi, Phil. Hi, Rob. Hello, everyone. How are Hi. you? How are you? Good. Yeah. Just got through watching the Yankee game. The Yankees beat Houston, so they're playing in the Midwest. So the games are in the start at eight instead of seven. How does the Yankees lineup look this year? Awesome. Really? Oh. Yeah. Hey, George Steinbrenner still playing? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's still 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 playing. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, you know, this, this, uh, now I'm going to have to deal with Rob on this because uh, when he comes on the show, if you find he's depressed, it's because they aren't doing well this year. And if he's happy, they're doing well this year. Well, they were, they, the game went into the ninth inning with no score because they got, they got the shit kicked out of them for eight innings. And then they put in a relief pitcher in the ninth and the Yankees, Scored four runs, uh, so I end up winning four one, four nothing. Yeah, yeah, um, but no, good. So, so it's it. it you're, you must be happy that it's time once again for baseball. Extremely. <laughs> I was watching it down on the big hundred twenty inch screen. Yeah. Really? So the season starting again? Or is it over? It started a month ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's over in October. Yeah. Right. Okay. I thought you were a baseball fan. Not really. I just take pictures. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I go, I take pictures. It's something to take pictures. Yeah, but you can't sell those pictures. No. No. Red Sox hat. Yeah. Okay. Really? Signed by Trot Nixon. I got a Trot Nixon signature on this. You know what I've got? I've, this is my golf cap. You know why it's not a baseball cap? Because I'm a fag. <laughs> I thought that was a great make America great again. No, no, I couldn't no. read the writing. No, 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 no. Those, those, <laughs> the difference between them and this is those look like Elmer Fudd's hunting. You know, uh, it should just instead of saying "Make America Great Again," it should just say "Wabbits" <laughs> on it. Uh, 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 Scott, are you, you're there, right, Scott? Yes. Can you hear me? No. Yeah, but I can't see it. You, you, we lost your oh. camera. For some reason. Oh, it did drop out, didn't it? I it thought maybe out. you were going off to the bathroom or something. No. We... Hey, I had a two-hat weekend. Uh, I, this one is uh, Gary Sinise hat for yeah. uh, uh, his Lieutenant Dan Van, Gary Sinise Foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's his name? Tony sent me this one. Uh, really? I, I, you were there, Scott, for a second. Yeah, it, it, it turns on and it shuts right off. So I'll just leave it off. Or, or try turning it back on once more and see what happens. So this is a newsboy hat. You know, the uh, bat and it's like. Yeah. What do you know? It keeps going off, Scott. You're right. But just jump in anytime you want to say something. Oh, I don't say much. I, I've banned. Uh, I've banned. Uh, 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 Tony. Tony from my uh, messenger on Facebook. So did I. Uh, I <laughs> it, what happens is, is you can block the conversation, and then just to be nice, I check in once in a while and make a comment, and then I block it again. <laughs> no, I I blocked him because I just said I it, 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 Man. it he twice wrote me and said I went and saw the the Avengers this weekend. It was good. Yeah. Robert Downey was good. And then he, and then he writes it again. I, the first time he wrote him, I said, I don't really give a shit, Tony. And the next time he wrote me, I said, you already told me. I, and I told you I didn't give a shit. And then he went, oh. And then I wrote back, I'm blocking you. And I blocked him. I just said, that's it. I, I do on a regular basis. 
Because then he also sends me pictures of every Hanna Barbera dumbass cartoon character. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna send me good cartoon characters, mm. there were some great cartoon characters, right? But I'm sorry, Scooby. Well, not Scooby Doo, uh, but whatever was not one of them. What have you got there, Phil? He sent me the Trump uh, comic book. Who? And uh, Tony. And it says uh, we're, uh, World War T. Uh, and then it's got a picture of Trump saying, not kneel for dumb anthem. <laughs> and, you know, so that's uh, the Trump. Oh. And then uh, he also gifted me a Spider-Man 2099. I don't know what this is about, but. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Either. I have, uh <laughs> I can proudly say that I have never owned a comic book in my life. <laughs> and so these are the... Well, what, two... were you, what were you, a fag? Yes, mm -hmm. probably. <laughs> but uh, yeah, two comic books. That's By the way, I, 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 I saw the uh, what might be, if you get a chance to watch it, or you can get it online, Yeah, it, it's an incredible hour with Kanye West. On TMZ. Uh, he's come out and said a few other uh, oh, oh, odd things. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So he's on TMZ, and they bring him on, and he gets into a fight with this guy, Van, who's a very bright black guy who's on the show, who just tells him, you know, you've really let us down, you know. You know, uh, 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 and and it is, it is, a, it is an hour of... You there? There's a certain genius in Kanye West, but there's also a certain amount of absolute fucking unmitigated insanity. And um, this whole thing, he comes on, and then all of a sudden he starts turning away from the camera and to the people in the back who all work at TMZ, and he starts t t yelling at him. You know, I was on. Uh, opioids and blah 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 blah. and if you don't believe me this and you don't believe that and then he gets into a fight with this guy van it is the most real half at least the first half of it but probably the whole thing the most real hour of television i have seen in since i can't remember when is this van the sidekick to the uh, 11 or whatever yeah. his name well, no 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 the si sidekick that uh, i can't remember the guy's name it was his sidekick but this is another guy who's like the head of their sports department and stuff and his name is van and he's very smart and he just he took he took uh um uh, kanye to the woodshed and he said when i was growing up you were my hero he said and and i've defended you here for years but now you've let me down you know, with with all this crap. One of the things that he said, which drove Van crazy, was number one, the Trump thing, which he said, these are people who are out to get us, not out to help us. And he said, but you're, a, you're a, you know, he said, you're not in touch because you're, you're on a different level than the rest of us. You're living, you know, you're married to whoever and, you know, you're hanging out with those people. Meanwhile, we got to live in the real world here, Kanye. And then Kanye came out with the thing about blacks were slaves for 400 years, so they must have liked something about it. He said oh. they chose. They to, chose. They, yeah. they chose to be slaves. Yeah. Because right. after two for 400 years, they didn't do anything about it. Woo! <laughs> Crazy. You know. Marjorie said, well, he's really bright. And I said, yeah, but he's also real dumb. You know, I mean, you know how you can be really smart and still be really dumb? Uh, and it was, it was amazing. You know, I find it difficult to even believe that a black man in America would at any point feel that Trump was a good idea for black people in America. Maybe he's getting past color and just dealing as a person. And just because he's black doesn't necessarily mean he's got to fall into a, uh, a lockstep. Well, that, that's that's one of the things he said. He said, I'm a free thinker. Okay, well, good. You're a free stupid thinker, but you're a free thinker. Hey, you know. Uh, <coughs> then. I mean, I, I you know, I, I realize that I like Phil. Phil's a decent guy. Uh, I uh, Phil's bright. You know, he's smart. But but he's, he's really off base with his politics. 
You know, he's full of crap. Full of crap. And well, so, so, an so is Kanye West. Uh, that's because you're an anarchist. You just want to tear down the system. Yeah, right, right. Want to hey, it's May 1. Let's long live the Haymarket Martyrs. Today's right. May 1. No, that's I, right. I don't want to tear down the system. I want to build up the system. Your boy is tearing it down. Yeah, and that's what he got elected to do. To tear it down. To, to clean the swamp. Yeah. Well, you know, he's treating he the, the swamp. What he we... keeps introducing more and more <laughs> swamp people. Yeah. He, he drained the swamp so he could use them. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he eats them. Yeah. I mean, how many more swamp people can he find? Maybe we should call Donald Trump and the swamp people. There is a show called Swamp People. I've never seen it, but as I click past shows, uh, Swamp yeah. People is one of them. No, I think it's Swamp Something yeah, else. Swamp, it, no, it has to do with some guy, people in the bayou who go hunting for stuff. Swamp something or another. Yeah, but the name of the show, I thought, was Swamp People. Oh, could be. Could <laughs> be. But, you know, I mean, uh, he, he, he literally uh, is draining the swamp, so he can, that's where he's recruiting his people. Uh, Even doctors. His doctors, too. Well, I hope yeah, he, even, you can't, even there, you know, got all kinds of oh, shit in their back that doctor was there for three presidents, including Obama. Uh, you know. Ronnie, Dr. Ronnie, that guy? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was Trump's physician. Well, no, no, no. it's the White House physician, and he has served three presidents. The Trump's physician, personal physician, was that goofy-looking guy who now says he's no longer Trump's physician after 35 years of being his you physician. Know why? Because Trump now has medical care provided by the government, and they don't, they don't, he doesn't take that uh, payment. <laughs> you know, he doesn't take what payment? Uh, the the guy doesn't take the government deal. He he takes other insurances, oh, so he can't work on Trump because he won't get paid. You know, that's not true. But <laughs> you want to believe it, please. Maybe that you should laugh after you tell a joke like that. So we know that's that's not true. Well, uh, OK. No, his 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 personal doctor, that doctor, goofy guy, whatever his name is. Howard uh, Bornstein. Uh, Bornstein. Uh, right. Forbin said a while back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The Jewish doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, I don't know what he is. He looks you know what he looks like? He he. he um, I I have I have a five dollar bill in my coat pocket. Now let me tell you why, and you'll find out What's where you find out where this is going. Um, the reason I have that five dollar bill in my pocket is that I was running to get to the store one day, and all of a sudden a woman said, "Is that your five dollar bill on the ground?" And I checked, and it, I felt maybe it could have fallen out of my pocket. You know, I'm, I'm losing uh, stuff. Uh, uh, uh. So I said, yeah, I guess, yeah. And I took it, and I went, and then I looked at my money, and it was all there. And I didn't, this was not my $5. So I now have this $5 in my pocket. So that when next time somebody comes up to me asking me for money, I'm going to give them that $5 bill. I'm going to pay it back since it's not mine. All right? So, sound good? Hey, if, this doc, if this Dr. Bornstein or whatever his name came up to me and said, you got Girl. any spare change? I'd give it to him in a second because he looks like he really needs it. <laughs> so, hey, Alex, maybe you could give the five bucks to the UPS guy for Christmas. No, no. <laughs> He's not getting anything. I'm going out and buying coal for him. A lump, lump of coal. Uh, yeah, it looks like Swamp yeah. People is a uh, is actually a show uh, featured on a history series. Oh, okay. So anyway, anyway, Rob, uh, uh, where'd you go on vacation? What'd you do on vacation? Uh, spent the first half of a week in Vegas, mm -hmm. and, and spent the second half of the week in uh, Southern California. Well, why yeah. why did you choose to split that? I mean, like I know why you go to Vegas because. You can go to. Well, I, I can't deal with more than like three days. In oh, Vegas. no. Vegas, and th more than three days in Vegas is insane. I used to have to go there for conventions, you know. Uh, I take the hookers there and everybody. No, I. Uh, I, I right. Everybody who travels and does conventions, they always wind up in Vegas. And five I, it's a five, great place day, to five visit. days in Vegas, you're climbing the fucking walls. Yeah. My wife's never been, and we went to see a bunch of shows, and yeah. we had a really good time. And, but it was time to leave. We went to did Hoover Dam. Yeah. Oh, right? that's that's always the, fun. Yeah. 
Uh, and then we uh, rented a car and drove through the desert and went out to, because this is really what else you're going to do. We went out to L.A. and where I have some family there. She has some family there. So we saw uh, some family um, and then flew. We drove back to Vegas and then flew out of McCarran. Oh, OK. Well, it sounds yeah, like a very good. nice little vacation. You know? Yeah. That, we, little, uh, that little trip from Vegas to L.A. Yeah. or to Southern California is a nice trip, too. Uh, I used to go do that, and we'd go through Victorville, where Victorville had the, the one reason you would want to stop in Victorville, but it's not there anymore. The Roy Rogers Museum. Huh. The worst museum you will ever be in in your life. <laughs> I can't imagine going. I think to I saw when I was a kid. Uh, yeah. Uh, to begin with, they had, they had uh, Trigger outside up on his heels or whatever with his dick showing oddly enough um <laughs> and then you go in there and there's everything that roy ever shot and killed stuffed oh jeez. and and and, and uh, you know and and the funny part is all these animals have a look on their face like it was the last thing they were thinking <laughs> just before they realized there was a gun pointed at them oh. you know and then they had a, a trigger stuffed only he was falling apart, and uh, and buttermilk. Do you remember who buttermilk was? That was Dale's horse. They stuffed. Butter. They wound up here wow. at they 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 fixed them all up and they put them on uh, uh, up to auction here at Sotheby's in New York. And we went by Shecky and I and saw the whole the whole thing there. But it was the worst museum I've ever seen. And it had you would walk through there <laughs> and there were these glass cases, and one of them was a tribute to God. And it, I swear to you, read on it, our religious heritage. Religious. What, did one of the letters fall off? No. It was spelled wrong. And it had been that way, obviously, for 20 years, and nobody noticed it. Nobody went. I mean, it was the worst low-rent uh, museum you've ever been to in your life. And it was right there. It was like at a corner. There was like, you go one way, you go on one road. You go one way, you go on the other road. And in the middle of it was the Roy Rogers Museum. Did they charge admission? Yes, of course. Oh. You know, uh, uh, I think uh, when I went there the first time, I think Roy and Dale were still alive, actually. But probably hadn't been in that museum in years. I mean, they were falling apart, you know. Uh, they were they were getting ready to meet their maker. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I went. I'm on vacation right now. I'm in Santa Barbara. Oh, really? Very yeah. nice. See, you 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 call us and then you don't say where you are, and there's no light there right now. I don't know what happened to the light in the room. Uh, oh, my wife's uh, she using the lights. I don't know why. Isn't Santa Barbara beautiful? The lights were too 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 bright for her. Oh, oh. Have, I, I don't feel alone anymore. Yeah, right. In too, my darkness yeah. here. I mean, we can still see you, but you know. So you're in Santa Barbara. Yeah. What what are you yeah. doing in Santa Barbara? Well, a friend of ours who uh, loves Santa Barbara used to live here, and yeah. she said. Uh, why don't we go? Well, we go to Santa Barbara this year. Why yes. don't you guys come with us? Yeah. So, what? So that's why we're here. Who was whispering? Who was whispering? What? His wife. I don't know who they're whispering. Who was whispering? Was that? Hello, Mrs. Jeff. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, you know, what's interesting is that people can do the, do their thing from anywhere, and we don't know that they aren't still at home, you know, because that's just the way it is now. I uh, couldn't get, I couldn't, I kept saying if I had the time, yeah. I would have called in, you know, at least with my phone. Yeah. And every time, because I'm so not used to it being so early, yeah. right, it, it, it always, I was like, ah, oh, I missed it. You know, it's like because it, yeah. that's why Phil's on every night. I, you know, I realized that it's I'm exhausted, you know, I, especially lately because the last week coming back, we flew back. We left um, we left uh, Vegas at like 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we got back to Dulles at 4.15 in the morning, Sunday wow. morning. Yeah. 
-hmm. And then it's an hour and change drive from Dulles home. So it was 6 a.m. Sunday morning when we got home, slept for a few hours. Then I got a surprise call from a friend of mine who used to live in this area, moved to New Hampshire. And he was supposed to be in Myrtle Beach, but the weather was so shitty in Myrtle Beach, he he would drive through Virginia and he wanted to stop over here Monday night. I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. So we had them for dinner Monday night and I'm still jet lagged and like, but I couldn't say no, don't come because I hadn't seen him and I really wanted to see him and his family. Um, And so, and then the rest of the week, you know, it's like 930, 10 o'clock. 10.30, 10.30, and all good intentions start to fade. Yeah. Well, say, you see, you I mean, I, I, I appreciate it when you call because I know you work, and it, it's t- it's the same time for you as it is for me. And yeah. I get up at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So uh, last week was tough. This week, and, and then, you know, the other thing is, as I said to you in, in the email, um, we really lucked out. I love my home, and we live in a beautiful area, but we've got some of the best neighbors I, in 61 years, have ever lived near. We are friendly with them. Mm-hmm. We spent Friday night with them. We had a yeah. party on Saturday. I had an impromptu party here on Sunday. The neighbors just came over. We, you know, it, It's just a blast. And so we spend a lot of time with them, and as I know, when the weather starts to get nice, everybody's hanging hanging out outside the kids are playing in the street and all of us are hanging out it's an awesome and my wife and the woman next door have become like sisters wow so and i and i really 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 appreciate that because my wife has been very self-conscious around english people uh, you know americans because of her language but yet she's now made all these american friends especially with the woman next door. So it's, it's really awesome. You know, that's terrific. That's not terrific. From best. My, 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 uh, my wife is, uh, is, is, has become good friends with, uh, with Natalia, who is Jack Garfine's, uh, significant other. Um, and, um, uh, every Saturday they have lunch and it's kind of nice that even at this point in her life, she's making friends, you know, Mm-hmm. And 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 it's a good friend. I mean, these are these uh, same thing with Jack. I become very close to Jack. And uh, by the way, Jack's interview, all the entire thing is up on my Facebook page. Great. Um, and a lot of people have been looking at it. We I put it up everywhere else too. It's also on yep. both yeah. Roku channels. And uh, uh, yeah, let's see here. Anywhere else? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's it, they're all it's all over the place. So uh, you can. It's now. Up for the ages, and now I've got to call Jack tomorrow, have some lunch with him, and then get him in here for that second interview I want to do with all the, you know, stories about Marilyn and James Dean and uh, the actor's studio and all the stuff that he did later on in life. Because it's like a phenomenal life this guy's lived. You know, just amazing. Just amazing. Um So, uh, anyway, I so as I say, the Nobel Peace Prize thing, Got to me over the weekend. I was just going, you know, how dare he? You know, you don't. It's not something you beg for, and he's begging for it, and he's got his crowd yelling, "No bell, no bell!" Like, you know, it, it, I'm sorry. It, it's a little more dignified uh, well, procedure than that. Wall. What? Build the wall. No bell. Yeah. Build the wall. Build the wall. What know. do you think about all these people? The caravan. Oh well, you know they have to they said they were going to do extreme vetting this is their opportunity if some of these people are really uh fleeing uh persecution then they should be let in and if and if they're just trying well, to that isn't what your that is what your boy said the other night when he was given a speech uh, but, to counter the uh, foreign law, the correspondence dinner i understand the international law is that they are to be let into the first country that they get into so mexico should have taken them now, I understand Mexico has taken some, but the ones that have been let through to, uh, to the border mm-hmm. uh, should have been handled by Mexico because that was the first country that they got into their, uh, out of their country. Why don't we take them? Why should we? Why shouldn't we? Well, it, we should have uh, don't we add, them. Please don't be Jewish and ask a question to answer a question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Why do Jews uh, answer questions with a question? Why shouldn't we? You know, right. I mean, <laughs> uh, anyway, 
you know, uh, our country is set up uh, by helping immigrants, and if they are truly persecuted uh, and they get to this country, now if they got to this country from Cuba and they got to the shore, uh, shore of Florida, then that would have been the first country that they got to, and that's why we take them. But the ones from Colombia, and uh, I believe it's uh, Colombia, uh, uh, they got into Mexico, and Mexico should have taken them. That's the deal. You know, we take the ones that get, that get to our shore. Well, but but that isn't uh, part of what they're doing is a protest. Well, if it's if it's a protest and they're not genuinely in need of sanctuary, then I say send them I, back. I say that anybody who wants to live here should be allowed to live here. That's that's the basis on which this country was formed. Well, not no. That's the basis of the poem. No, it's on, not the basis true. of the poem. It's also the basis. People who came here originally were fleeing persecution. You mean like the Jews that came on the uh, on the boat and got sent back from New Jersey? Well, that's because we by that time had become assholes. Okay, huh. a lot of them were Dutch. Is that remember? Were they Dutch well, as well? Should have been sent back. <laughs> now I thought they were concentration camp survivors. No, not yet. This was during the war. No, it was yeah. after the war. There were uh, uh, there was a uh, some sort of barge or, oh, or oh, boat oh, uh, that, was that came over and had two hundred. Because uh, uh, I know there were there were some boats that came over uh, f during the war of no, uh, Jews who war. wanted uh, you know. But we weren't accepting Jews in this country during World War Two. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know after World War. Too. So, were you know, thank you very much, America. You let six million of my potential relatives die, you know. And, and much closer for you because of your heritage. Well, I mean, my father, well, my father came over here after World War I. In fact, supposedly there is a sh photograph of the troops coming back to Germany through the Brandenburg Gate and there are crowds there. And my father spotted his picture in the crowd. Wow. I mean, so they came right after that. So they got out before the whole Hitler thing happened. Uh, they came in in about 19, I think 1921, if I'm not mistaken. I, at least I, I, I looked in the Ellis Island uh, documents, and he was, uh, uh, my, my father and his mother were listed there as coming in around 19. Maybe 1921. I'd have to go back and look at it. Uh, I thought the pogroms were going on even in the late 1800s. The pogrom, pro, pogroms were in Russia. Yeah. Now my and, uh, and Lithuania. There, there was, yeah, there but I'm but we're, 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 we're yeah. talking about Germany. We're, but they were yeah. in Germany at this point, and uh, they got out before I think before Hitler even took power, or as yeah. uh, or uh, you know, or as I like to think of him, Drumpf. Uh, you know, I, my relatives came over around 1880, uh, mostly from Russia and Austria. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Jack Bishop has joined us, host of The Intersection, which follows immediately over most of the same station. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, hey, Phil, yeah. could I get repatriated back to my native homeland? I'm sure there's some people that would love to do that for you. But uh, they, they I mean, have. Yeah, it, well, I mean, my family well, got here in the 1700s. Yeah, no, wait well, a minute. But can you what, tell me where from? Do you know where from? As a matter of fact, I recently had uh, some DNA oh, work oh, done. Oh, forget that bullshit. They, you know, mine came back and said, you're Jewish and you're from around here somewhere. <laughs> oh, good <laughs> guess. Course, good guess, <laughs> pal. I'm 99% Jewish. Marjorie was only 90% Jewish. <laughs> Hey, well, uh, well, by, well, by that token, I was only 74% uh, uh, <laughs> Sub-Saharan African. Oh, really? And what, yeah. what was the rest of you? Irish. As a matter of fact, 19% of my ethnic background mm -hmm. is Irish. Really? Yeah. There and there go. was about 2% that was Asian, which we knew about, and also about uh, one and a half, two percent that was German that we knew about. Really? Or in other words, whoever was passing through town, we were screwing them. Right. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Now, sure. uh, your eyes could uh, could you could say that they have a little bit of an Asian bent? 
Right? Yes, Which... and that and that was because of my great great grandfather who worked on the railroad in the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Now, 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 this is something my family knows about because, you know, there was no, you know, attempt to hide it. Mm -hmm. uh, the United States at that time had a policy that Asian men could come to this country, but Asian women could not. Because if the women came, the men would stay and there would be families. And uh, there was a thing called the Asian exclusion rule that lasted up until the 1960s. Does that mean no egg rolls? That means also no tiki, no shirty. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this one guy. Welcome to the racist hour here on the, uh, hey, on the Ramble. Hey, 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 it's America, man. You, you cannot be an American and not have a tinge of racism. Oh, I, you know, I, was, I, I, I was live and not have a tinge of some, racism. Well, somebody said to me once, are you racist? And I said, I'm white. Does that answer your question? Hey, yeah. I'm black. Does that answer the question also? Yeah, I was surprised right. when I discovered mine. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you and I have known each other, I did not believe I was racist to any degree until I was in my late 30s. And right. then I got the shock of my life. I thought you well, got well, racist. Well, wait a minute. What made, you, what made you realize you were racist? Well, it was a bright and sunny day in Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, I was... I was driving by one of my favorite restaurants in a little convertible that I had. I had the top down, mm -hmm. having a great day. And then I, I saw this couple come out of another restaurant that I love. Mm -hmm. And they were hugging and squeezing and, you know, rubbing all up against each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was incensed, Alex. I was so pissed, I couldn't believe it. It was an interracial couple. Well, uh, yeah. And uh, what bothered me was that she was black, he was white. And then I started laughing because I was really pissed off about the fact that that red-headed Irish girl that I've been living with for two years had left my ass about three weeks before. And I realized that son of a bitch was going to get some tonight. And I was going home to my bottle of Jergens lotion. Yeah, uh, I don't know that that's a racist thing. That's oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. It, it, be, believe me, but, believe but, uh, me. Uh, no, it's at that point that he noticed the black and white uh, together. Yeah, you know, you I know. mean, I look, I'd been, you know, I'd been living with this girl for two, three years. We had we talked about getting married, having little pintos together, and uh, when I saw that couple, I got, I mean, I, you know, it was just like a, like a blind searing kind of hate that I had there for yeah, a minute, two minutes. A minute or two minutes. Well, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, I got to tell you that I never knew racism existed until I met you. And we oh, knew yeah. each other. Yeah. We knew yeah, each we other in this. Houston, yeah. Texas. And yeah. uh, we would do things to drive the local population crazy, like walk down the street with him on one side of my wife and me on the other side of my wife and having everybody try to figure out who was with who. I remember being in a restaurant with you, and you said to me, well, tell me, do you and Ronnie find that it's difficult living here in the South? And I said, my God, you know, I've traveled 1,500 miles to get shot because <laughs> this son of a bitch is my friend who's known me since I was a teenager. I'm going to be well, You know what it was, what was strange town. about it is we were both from San Francisco, and really... You know, even though I'm sure racism existed in San Francisco, oh, yeah. we didn't know that. We didn't have that profound a feeling that it existed. And so here are the same two guys in a, an area where you had to live on one side of the town and yeah. I could I had yeah. to live on the other. Um, my favorite story about racism. Well, it in looks San like Francisco. Rob wanted to ask a question. Did you have yeah. a question there, Rob? Nope. Oh, OK. You it's not going to be asked the black guy. <laughs> the first oh, racist. Oh, 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 that's uh, I, that's uh, uh, that Mooney guy's routine. Asked, yeah, asked a black man. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I I grew up in uh, I grew up in Marin County, which I should have known was racist because there was only one black guy who had a business on Fourth Street in San Rafael, mm -hmm. and there were no blacks in my high school. And yet, if you really? wanted if you wanted to go to see blacks in a high school, you had to go over to Tamil Pius High School in Mill yep. Valley. Yep. And that's where all the blacks went. 
Uh, well, my high but, school uh, but, but was, I grew up. I grew up very naive about it because I never had a had a had a had a barrier that way. In fact, I I used to hang out with kids from Tamil Pius all the time because I liked the black kids better than I liked the white kids. Well, that's because Marin City was closer to yes. the Tamil Pius. It's well, in the school I'll tell district. you the greatest story. The the story I continue to tell is that I had uh, these two friends. Uh, um, uh, Baron, uh, let's see here, the Baron brothers, um, and um, I can't I can't remember both their names. But anyway, the fact was, they had, I went over to their house in Marin City, and they were building these newer homes up on the hill. These were the old shacks that had been used to house people who were built worked in the shipyards in World War II, and they let mm -hmm. blacks live in them, and mm -hmm. and. and some of the blacks, they were giving the ability to buy homes up on the hill that they were building. And so uh, Theo Baron, the father, decided to buy one of these homes. And I said to him, I said, why are you buying one of these homes? Why, you know, you have a, you're the only businessman on 4th Street in San, black businessman on 4th Street in San Rafael. He ran a shoe repair shop. And I said, you made a lot of money off of that, right? He said, yeah, why don't you just buy a home somewhere else in Marin County? And he said, I want to thank you, white people. I said, well, <laughs> why? He says, you've saved me a lot of money. I said, why? What? He said, because I can't move into your part of the county. And it was the first time I ever, I almost asked him why. You know, because mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I was blind to that. Well, I know? think there was a difference, Alex. You know, uh, uh, there is the kind of, segregation you and I saw in the South. Yeah. Which, you know, was, which was profound. To us. And profound. then there was kind of a laissez-faire yeah. kind of thing that, you know, that happened in the North. My first contact with the racism in San Francisco didn't happen until I was 12 years old. And that was, uh, my dad had come home from the base. He was looking out his bay window and he said, God damn it, there are Okie's moving in. And this and and <laughs> and he literally and he literally said this to my mother. Yeah. Ruby, there goes the neighborhood. Really? And and yes, yes, I'll never forget this the longest day I live. And of course, you know, you're not gonna confront your old man when you're twelve years old, particularly when when he's a chief petty officer. You know, you're gonna you know, you're gonna right. toe the line. And I wish he had lived a little longer and when my nuts finally dropped. And I would have said, can you imagine when we moved into this neighborhood in Bernal Heights? Yeah. Some of the neighbors probably said the same thing. Yeah. There but, goes the neighborhood. But, but San, Francisco, it, 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 San Francisco never liked to think of itself as racist. Yet yeah. there were. Oh, it's very racist. But didn't you, didn't you guys experience the not, you know, segregated restaurants and bathrooms and water fountains like the rest of the country? No. We didn't have those. Yeah, the rest, and the but, thing is, but the there, rest of the country, much of it wasn't like that. You know, I talked to friends of mine. It was the South, and they were all Democrats. You know, they a, were a the black uh, could, uh, But here's, here's the thing. Road, Let me just say this quickly about San Francisco. You, you, if you were black, you could go into almost any restaurant you wanted to, but you usually didn't. Yeah. You know, ah. you would pick the restaurant that had the black people in it. Okay. Hey, ILWU Local 10 was the first union to have blacks. In fact, uh, they had the first black president. Uh, I forget his name, Theophilus something or other, uh, uh, back in the 60s. It's the International Longshoremen Workers Union. Yeah, ILWU. Yeah, yeah Local United. 10. Yeah. Two minutes. Uh, yeah. I know, I know I have two minutes. Well, Jack. <laughs> what? Oh. He looked at the clock and said, Ooh, I got two minutes. Yeah, well, you, you see, there's my theme song rolling, and then he'll sign hey, I off. I'll go there. get my theme song ready. Yeah, go get your theme song ready. Call me again sometime. Let's talk more about this. But you and I experienced our first dose of racism in, in Houston, Texas together. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was your fault, man. They said, get the Jew. The black guy can pick cotton. Oh, well, I had that Jew boy thing going for me, too, down there, you know. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Jack. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks to Mr. Perulis for having joined us this evening. Always good having you here, John. Phil, good having you here. Rob, great to have you back. Always love your presence. Whenever the baseball game's over with and you can be with us, <laughs> hop online. Scott Modiker, thank you. And uh, Jeff, thank you. And I think that's it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to sneeze. I think I have allergies. <coughs> <coughs>
Yeah. <laughs> if uh, he, what's his name? Uh, Bubble said, if you sneeze more than three times, it's allergies. So, welcome to allergy season, everybody. Anyway, everybody, wave goodbye to our fine folks out there. That's our citizens panel. Hopefully, some of them will be back with us again tomorrow night. Uh, let me see here. Where do I go? Oh, here we go. There we go. I got a. Uh, I'm picking my nose. I'm not really. I'm scratching it because it's itching. I'm sneezing. Uh, let me see here. Let me uh, get rid of everybody and get rid of the uh, the phones so Jack can use them next with Amy and his program called The Intersection. That's up next, followed at 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time by Connections. Tomorrow night, it's the our sports show with Franchise MC at 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time uh, called The Arena. And then uh, Damian Chaplin is at 9.30 with uh, The Exchange. And then we'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. In the meantime, if you see her... Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.